OK, class, uh, today we're going to do our more with Arduino and the ESP32 and UNS. And um, so this is Penn College of Technology. And uh, behind me is kind of a diagram of what we're going to do today. So the idea is that we have our Arduinos um, that are connecting to Wi-Fi. Everybody has their own Arduino. And we're going to all publish to the same broker. Uh, we're going to simulate OEE type data into the broker, and then we're going to use the ignition gateway and the dashboard project to visualize um, that data. So let me share the screen so you can at least get an idea. So let's go to the dashboard. Uh, find the right one here. That's the screen I want to share. So let me go back, share. There we go. So essentially, this is the um, the dashboard that you're going to end up with. So uh, one of the students from this morning um, uh, uh, added these LED widgets in the perspective dashboard project, and then uh, connected to the appropriate tags, availability, quality, and performance. And also we have good count, reject count, and total count. So these numbers are used for quality, right? You divide good count, you divide it by total count, and you get quality. And these other ones are sort of randomly generated. And then we put the OEE on this gauge. So you can see that OEE is, is kind of changing a little bit. Uh, not very realistic. I'm going to tweak this simulation so it's a little more exact, but it kind of gives you an idea. Uh, it gives us a starting point. OK, so how do we get started? Um, let's take a look at our, our notes here uh, and go to our OneNote and let's go under ESP32. I'll do a new page here, call it uh, UNS training. And I have basically um, in our one note, I have a bunch of uh, notes here. I'll just put it in in one note instead of on the uh, and here's the steps we need to do. So here's all the steps that we need to do. There's like five steps to connect and the program's at the top. OK, so <clears throat> this is the program that Claude.ai generated. So this is an ESP32 program to simulate OEE data and continuously uh, publish at a cycle time interval. And I don't think I'm sharing this page. Let me make sure I'm sharing this the correct page here. Uh, stop sharing, share uh, my OneNote notes, OK? So this is basically the steps that we're going to go through. Now, last night, and I spelled Arduino wrong. Last night, I took an Arduino home and I ran this program, and now it's continually running at my house, right? So my Arduino is publishing to the same broker, same namespace. So the idea of a unified namespace is anybody can publish to it. They can subscribe to anybody else's data, and it makes it so we have you know real time uh, visibility to our data, right? We can make dashboards from it, and that's the approach that um, uh, a lot of companies are adopting because it's low cost and scalable. So if you click on this link, right? If you go to the notebook and you click on this link, right? This is actually running at my house right now and again let me share my screen so let me jump over and share uh, this window right so this is a little different looking window because it's it's uh from my house and my house uh actually it actually quit running so this uh arduino the way i have this program running i i modified it is it only runs to a certain point and once this one um, variable fills up, 
it stops. So that actually, it jumped out of the loop. But this is actually from my house, and anybody could actually uh, get to it. Now, how, how did I do this without logging in? The way this dashboard project works is if you make your dashboard public, uh, you, can, you can see anybody else's dashboard that made it public on this gateway. Like this morning, we're looking at, at John's. So here's John, uh, John's dashboard that I, I brought up earlier. So this is John's dashboard because he made it public. So I want you, what you guys to do is when we create your dashboards, uh, click on the public option, and that way they'll appear here in the public uh, folder, right? So that way, if you know for what it's worth, you can you can show this to other people, right? So I'm going to keep at least a couple of these uh, Arduino's plugged in so that we can have data continuously. Eventually, I'm going to have it like running all the time. We have IT working on our server. That server on that rack there is going to be running 24-7. So as soon as they're finished with that, we can run that continuously. OK, so let's go through these steps. OK, um, you know, for people that are watching, you know, on LinkedIn or whatever, uh, let me give you a little bit more of a background. So what we did is we we had this ESP32 C3. Um, it's a basically a five dollar chip, and uh, our little circuit. Eventually, most of us have this wired up yet, but for now we don't need to because we're just running a program inside to simulate data. But we're going to have a potentiometer here running on the analog input, so we can have some variable values. We're going to have uh, three push buttons. We're going to have an RGB on pins eight, nine, and ten. And then we're also going to have a DHT11 uh, humidity pressure temperature sensor eventually as well. So all this stuff can be found on the um, uh, website. If you look uh, wiki ESP32C3, there is uh, a really good Wikipedia web page that shows you all this data. And actually, I've got to switch back. Uh, I have to share my screen again. Well, I'm not very good at my podcasting abilities, am I? So let me go back to share my my uh, OneNote. There it is. So this is the schematic uh, that we're starting with, something very simple uh, to, to interact with our UNS and create some data, you know, so we can turn on lights and et cetera, control things with buttons. All right, so let's go back to our uh, UNS training. So this is the program. So those of you that under, remember all those steps, just go ahead and copy uh, this program from uh, this comment block, right, all the way down. It's a long program. Right, I'm going to mark this off in like some color so it makes sense. All right, so these five, so basically the program comes back down to this last curly bracket. I'm going to make the color uh, something like turquoise. So everything in turquoise, we're gonna we're gonna program. Now, what I want you guys to do is is uh, modify the um, the uh, namespace, right? So instead of JLR home here, uh, before you publish it, you're going to um, put your your name or initials here. Right, because this is our unified namespace in, in that enterprise site area line cell recommended hierarchy. Right, and these are our variables uh, availability, performance, quality, that are calculated along with OEE. And I'm also including total count, good count, and reject count. Right, so so go ahead and and copy that. And remember, we also need to grab that pub sub zip file. All right, so we'll go all like it's a fairly long program. So grab all the way down to the last curly bracket, control C, and let's do these four steps. So the first thing we need to do, of course, here's the reference to the Seed Studio. Wiki, wiki page, but the first thing you want to do is open Arduino and, and copy this URL. Well, 
before you lose your URL, right? Um, open up Arduino, and I gotta switch over. I gotta switch over to share my other screen. So this is Arduino. So let's say let's say we open this up and nothing's going on here. Uh, so you want to do um, so paste that in there. So control V. And at here at the bottom, what I want you to do is make this unique. So instead of JLR home cell, put in your name. So I'm going to put my name in uh, just Jeff uh, underscore Rankin in. Or you can put your initials in, whatever. And I'm going to make it further. I'm going to put EET 405 because I want this to be specific, right? So this makes it unique. But what's cool about this, let me undo that. You can do this really quickly by highlighting this JLR home, right? Right click and do change all occurrences. And then it highlights everywhere it found JLR home. And you can put in, you know, Jeff underscore Rankin. And I'm going to put EET 405. You don't have to put EET 405. I just want it to be uh, specific because I already published two uh, that before. So this makes it unique so that everybody gets their own place in the UNS, their Arduino data. Okay. Now, if you remember, we have to do a couple more things to. Uh, Finish that. Put this over here like this. So the next thing we have to do is get this out of the way. Oops. Uh, let me go back. I guess I have to switch my screen sharing again. Back over to my OneNote. Sec step number two, uh, we we got to put this um, URL into the boards manager. URL, so grab this file here. This HTTPS. Is that different than the link we have in No, it's the same one. Okay. Same one. It just so do file preferences. If your um, computer didn't get rebooted, it's probably already in here. Right? So if you if, some, if whoever was on here beforehand, it was in my class, it, it could be just still in there. Right, so you have to put that board manager's URL. Then you have to search, right? Oh, shoot. The, the next step, once you put that board manager in there, you have to search for ESP32, install the second option. So let me go back to um, this again, right? So we just did the file preferences and we put this in the boards manager URL. Second step is to open up the boards manager, tools, board, boards manager, and search for ESP32. I actually closed my board, I had my board manager up already. This is kind of it's weird. So type ESP32, right? And what that does is it searches for these other options. And see, you want we want the second one, which I already have installed, right? That's why it's all weird, right? It's already installed. That expressive. It says boards included in this package, right? Uh, all these and this package includes all these boards. Ours is the ESP. 32, whatever. It, it, so it's quite large. So that's why it's going to take a while to uh, install. So once that's all done, just pick your uh, port, right? Everybody that plugs in, uh, I have two of them plugged in. So I got to figure out which one is which. So I'm going to unplug one.
Um, that doesn't help. <laughs> 